Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi, selamat sejahtera. Okay, um, there's another uh, source of uh, learning resource that you can use apart from our Enmodo, which is uh, the main uh, the main learning platform for this course. There's another one which I have uh, set up and I've been using it for a few years uh, already. Uh, this one is called Wiki. Yeah? Wiki. I'm sure you are quite familiar with Wikipedia. Yeah? So Wikipedia, the concept is everyone can contribute to construct uh, the information or the knowledge on any topic. So people around the world can collaborate to write on the topic. So that's the Wikipedia, the concept of Wikipedia. The, the, orig the original concept of Wikipedia is actually based on the wiki concept, which, which means that we can build up uh, the, the, the learning resources on, on any topic together. Yeah? Um, but for this wiki, um, basically I have built, up, built, built, built this up uh, myself. And I have used this as an, uh, just maybe as a repository or the place where I can where, where I, I can share some of the learning resources for this course. So you can find uh, home is this page. There's a general in instruction how to use a wiki, the how to the resources for this course, the lecture which you ha you have uh, maybe viewed some of the online lectures which I link through Enmodo and the lecture summary which I just created and some of the activities and if you like you can also set up your individual page this individual page just like a web page you can put in your you know uh, lecture summary or so these are some example of your previous uh, the seniors I I keep these pages as uh, as an example of what you can do with a wiki page and you can also group, uh, create a group page. Okay? And if you want to know how to create page, how to use this, uh, there's an instruction here. And even I have created a tutorial here. This is actually a video tutorial. You can click this and uh, there's a step-by-step -step how to create the page. So everything is already prepared for you. So up to you if you want to use it or not. Um, for example here, the, if you click the lecture summary, So you will find uh, this a lecture by lecture summary. Okay, lecture by lecture summary. So after, if you have problem to understand certain thing from the lecture and some of the resources and the link for you to further explore the topic. So for example here, lecture three. So I wrote this in the past tense, yeah, and in the as informal as possible yeah so that you can uh, understand more from what we have covered what we have learned learned in the class so we can go through this uh, lecture summary we can print it out and uh, in fact actually you can add to it because that is what wiki is about you can edit this page you can click edit and you can edit add but please don't delete <laughs> you can add if you like uh, any new information that is the spirit to build the knowledge together so don't leave everything to me okay today we will be discussing about uh, <coughs> one uh, topic in food rheology that is uh, visco viscoelasticity so far we have discussed about flow behavior and when we talk about the different uh, form of materials or different form of food materials um, we we have uh, we, we have um, examples of like uh, liquid form food food in the liquid form so the easiest example may be water yeah or fruit juice or honey 
So for this type of liquid food, we talk about the fl the, the flu behavior because they can flow readily. Okay. And they appear and look to us like a liquid. So when you pick any when you pick up any uh, food material, you can uh, look at the appearance, the physical appearance, and you can tell whether you can say whether it is a liquid, you can describe it as a liquid, or you can describe it as a solid. Take something like cheese, hard cheese. So maybe you, you will say that oh this is a solid form or something like say ice cube so it's a solid right you wouldn't say that ice cube is a liquid before it melts take something like fruit juice obviously it looks like a liquid if you take something like say uh, a, tomato, a very thick tomato sauce how, how would you describe it is it a liquid or is it a solid Margarine, is it solid or is it a, li is it a liquid? So some, sometimes it's not, it's not very obvious. It's not very obvious. Yeah? But theoretically, theoretically, any type of material can be, dis can be described as viscoelastic material. Even water. Yeah? But uh, the term viscoelastic is a term to describe um, any material would contain some viscous component and some elastic component. Viscous component means it has a liquid-like property. And elastic component means it has a solid-like property. Okay? So take something like water again. Obviously, you know, most people will say that water is a liquid, right? Water is a liquid because it, it appears like a liquid and it behaves like a liquid. It can flow easily because the viscous component, the liquid-like component in water is the main, the dominant component in, in water. Take something like margarine or butter, it looks like solid. It appears like solid to our eyes. Because in, in butter, we can say that the elastic component or the solid-like component in butter is the dominant component. But there is also a liquid-like component in butter, but it is very small component. So in this in the in case of butter, because the elastic component or the solid-like component is, 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 is the more dominant one, so it appears to our eyes like a solid material. And in water, because the viscous component or the liquid-like component is the more significant one, the more, the, the more dominant one, so it appears like a liquid. But theoretically, if we take any material, it should have some viscous component or liquid-like component and some solid-like component or elastic component. So whether the material would appear as liquid or would appear as a solid, it would, would, de it would depend on the properties of the material. And later we will define one parameter called a Debra number, which actually um, uh, you can see the relationship between the, the, the viscous or the elastic comp uh, property of the material and the rate of deformation. Okay? Um, so before we go further, I want to show a video which uh, perhaps some of you would never imagine. Okay, this video that you're going to watch shortly. Provider of precise water jet cutting services featuring active tolerance control with the capacity to cut parts up to four times faster than conventional water jet cutting machines. In this video, 
water is used to cut the metal. So this machine is called water jet, water jet cutter. So that's a water jet actually. So have you ever imagined that water, a liquid that, you, that we drink, can be used to cut metal? Do you know about this? So it's amazing, isn't it? But actually we can, uh, perhaps we have experience, sometimes when there is a, a heavy rain, you know, and you walk in the rain, the, the rain drop on your face, and you can feel sometimes can be quite painful, right? Yeah. Or when you when we play with the water jet, or that uh, you know the, the water pistol, or water jet, and you try to uh, point to someone, it, it can be quite painful. Because what happens here? What's the principle here? Okay. So the water at a very high pressure. The water actually was. Uh, actually at very high pressure, coming out from the nozzle at a very, very high pressure. What was the pressure just now mentioned in the video? Hmm? To cut that metal precisely. It is still early in the morning. Uh, uh, I, I thought you, you listen everything, you, can, uh, you, you catch everything in the, in the video. What was the pressure, the water jet pressure just now? 80,000 PSI. What is the atmospheric pressure? Now, the atmospheric pressure. Huh? 1 ATM, 1 atmospheric pressure equal to how, how much PSI in PSI? One ATM equal to <laughs> one fifteen, fifteen equal to fifteen psi, and it is eighty thousand psi. Divide by fifteen. So can you imagine the pressure, the water jet just now at eighty thousand psi can cut the metal precisely to whatever shape that we want. When we shoot the water at a very high pressure, here, think about the deformation of the water. Imagine, let's say, imagine uh, we pour the water now from this bottle. Okay? The water deform and flow, right? Rheology is a, is a science of deformation and flow. But now let's take the factor of time, the time factor here. So when the water flow, when I just pour like this, the water flow slowly due to the gravity, right? And the water deform slowly. If we measure the shear rate, the shear rate is perhaps you know, at a low shear rate. But now the water is pumped through the small jet at a very high pressure, 80,000 PSI. Think about the rate of deformation here. The rate of deformation is very, 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 very fast. So, now, the point that I want to stress here, even water, a liquid water, would behave like a solid depending on the rate of deformation. Another example, another scenario. Let's go to the swimming, swimming pool, but don't jump into the swimming pool. You just maybe uh, 
you sit at the uh, I mean at the you know uh, outside the swimming pool and just play with your the water with your hand yeah? uh, and try to just move your hand slowly in the water you can feel the water right you can feel the water now make it faster move your hand faster and faster and faster and faster the faster you move your hand in the water the more resistant you feel right become harder and harder and harder now again it's about the rate of deformation of the water the harder you move your hand the harder the, the faster is the deformation of water and the water now feels more and more and more like a solid the same thing the water that is flowing uh, in the sea you know you imagine that you know if we just uh, just jump into the sea or into the swimming pool nothing happen you know can swim nicely if you can swim otherwise <laughs> you get drawn uh, but now imagine you go to the Penang Bridge and climb to the top of the Penang Bridge just imagine don't do it I, do, I won't be responsible it's being recorded now <laughs> but just imagine you climb to the top of the Penang Bridge and jump pew, into the Penang Bridge you'll die the moment we hit the surface of the water from the very high point the water feels now like a rock solid because the moment you hit the water the rate of deformation at on oops at that point is very very fast and now at a very high deformation rate the water would behave like a solid remember the water should have also the viscous or the liquid like component and the solid light -like component or the elastic component which component now would become more dominant that's another factor the rate of deformation okay imagine also when uh, you can watch you know, on the youtube the plane uh, crash on the sea and the moment it hit the water it will you know become into uh, disintegrate into pieces i like to watch this program on on discovery channel or you know on the plane crash investigation but i always fly so sometimes when i uh, imagine those accidents can be very scary but then uh, the, the point that i'm trying to make here when the plane crash on the sea surface why it just broke break into pieces because now the plane at a very very high speed uh, maybe 800 km per hour or more hit the, the surface of the water of the water at a very high speed so the the, the water actually deformed at a very very fast rate and will behave like a solid so that's i think enough example to before uh, we uh, learn more about the concept of viscoelasticity uh, but the picture here it's a nice uh, illustration of uh, the another manifestation of viscoelastic property okay if you stir water water is a Newtonian fluid right you stir water slowly and faster and faster have you ever seen the water climb up the rod no <laughs> no no the water would not climb up the road when you stir water very very fast what you get is a vortex right what you get is a vortex not the water climb up the road if you can show that then uh, perhaps there is something new <laughs> no when you for a newtonian fluid like water or fruit juice or honey even when you stir very very fast yeah like this using the steering rod you, you would never see that water climb up the road but you get a vortex but something like this a dough in this case when you stir very fast actually it will climb up the road like this 
this is a good uh, evidence of viscoelastic property, meaning in this sample, in this material, it has a higher elastic component than the viscous component, higher solid-like component compared to the liquid-like component. So, there's a, when we look at the different type of material, food material, it can range from solid-like, example like margarine, butter, chocolate bar, anything that looks like a solid, to a liquid-like, looks like a liquid, feel like a liquid, flow like a liquid. But most material would behave somewhere in between. Yeah? Most material would behave somewhere between the ideal solid or ideal fluid. So, this material, we call it viscoelastic material. Okay? So, the viscoelastic material, the range, it can have, it is actually somewhere between something that has a purely elastic or purely viscous. Something like water, maybe you want to think of it as like almost a purely viscous, Newtonian behavior. Purely elastic, can you think of one example? Usually we use, uh, maybe uh, in, in physics especially, we use spring as an example of ideal elastic body or elastic material. Sometimes we, uh, we call it as a Hookean, H-O-O-K-E-A-N, Hookean solid. Yeah? So meaning that something like a spring, when you stretch a bit and you release, it will go back to its original shape. Yeah? But you, if you stretch too much, maybe it won't go back to the original shape. You stretch it over the elastic limit. So most material is visco uh, viscoelastic, meaning that it has some visco or viscous component, which is the, uh, the liquid-like component, and elastic component, which is a solid-like component. Which one is more uh, significant? Which one is higher? So that would uh, define how the material would look like. If there is more solid-like or elastic component, maybe it would appear like a solid. If there is more liquid-like component, maybe it would appear more like a liquid. So viscoelasticity means having both viscous or liquid and elastic or solid properties. Okay. So this is the so-called just now, the rod climbing effect. So this is a good demonstration it is a viscoelastic material here. So we, this uh, mi the, the mixing rod, the steering rod. So you can see the liquid climb up the rod due to the normal force, actually. So this rod climbing phenomenon, or also known as Weizenberg effect. So when we see something like this, this phenomenon, Weizenberg effect. So we know that the material is a viscoelastic component and it has a significant uh, elastic or solid-like component. If you do this, repeat this experiment using Newtonian fluid, water, fruit juice, honey, you will not see this effect. So that is one simple way to, to differentiate between a simple Newtonian fluid and a viscoelastic material. Okay. So the unique manifestation of these effects would depend on the ratio of elastic to viscous components in the viscoelastic material. If you have more or higher elastic component, meaning the ratio of elastic to viscous is high, then you can see maybe this material would climb up even higher. 
okay. So road climbing phenomenon or Weisenberg effect is a manifestation of the elastic component or the solid like component in the sample. And another uh, manifestation of viscoelastic component is so-called snapback property. Snapback property, maybe probably you have experience also. When you pour something from the bottle, maybe the toothpaste or maybe the sauce, you will notice that when you, when you pour, then after that you uh, stop. Whatever left at the end of the bottle will sort of go back. So it's just like elastic material, you stretch, then you release, it will go back. So that is a snap back property, which is also an evidence of the elastic component in the material. So the, for example, the source retreating back to the bottle after the portion is squeezed out. Remember, uh, in the previous lecture, I give you an example of the chocolate processing. The chocolate melt dispense from the nozzle, from the dispenser. Then we want, we want the, the, the liquid chocolate to stop flowing. So this is called the dye swelling effect. Depending on how much is the elastic component in the material, the more, the higher the elastic component in the material, the more you will expand. Or it can be just like that. So that will depend on the elastic component or the solid light component in the material. So now, to represent this, we have, we can build up a mechanical model consists of a spring which represents a purely elastic component or we can also describe it as a Hookean solid and we can represent the viscous, purely viscous component by using a dashboard. A dashboard is like a syringe, like a syringe. Syringe, you put, you fill the syringe with liquid and you can pull, you can push or pull the plunger, right? So we have, and the liquid inside this dashboard is a Newtonian liquid. So for the viscous component, we can use a dashboard to represent it. For the elastic component in the viscoelastic material, we can use spring to represent it. Now, if we build up a model by a simplest one would be one spring and one dashboard. Then we can make it more and more complicated. We can have a few springs, a few dashboard. We can arrange it in series. We can arrange it, you know, uh, uh, in, in many different ways. Just like in, in the electrical circuit, we can arrange the, the the resistor, everything in different ways. So therefore, by by having a different number of springs and different number of dashboard and arrange them in different uh, arrangement, we can get actually a different degree of uh, viscoelastic material with different degree of elastic component and different degree of viscous component. So don't worry about this. I don't want to go further into this, uh, but I, I just have to say something about this because when you read any book on uh, rheology about viscoelastic, probably you will see this. So next time when you see this, it won't be very you know, strange to you. The idea is just to, to sort of have a model to describe the different degree of elastic component and different degree of viscous component in any viscoelastic material. So we can combine several units of spring and dashboard with different arrangements to represent material with different viscoelasticity. Uh, this particular lecture is also available as an online lecture and I've uh, shared the link in Nmodu and I actually expect you to watch that before you come to the lecture.
how many of you have not watched? Don't worry, you can raise your hand. Okay. You have not watched the, the lecture. You haven't watched. Yeah, this lecture. The link given in Enmodo. It's okay. Um, but it's there. On, and also in the wiki, just now. So please register for, for the wiki. Uh, I'll give you the address shortly. And if you not not very clear, you can listen to that uh, online lecture again. Yeah. Now I want to introduce this important parameter when we when we discuss about viscoelastic material. Uh, this is one parameter that we have to really uh, understand. Uh, this is called. This parameter is called the, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> Debra. Debra number. Yeah? This number is to describe time dependent viscoelastic behavior. Now recall, recall what we learned in the previous lecture about the non Newtonian behavior. We have two types the non-Newtonian time independent and the non-Newtonian time dependent. And similarly for viscoelastic material, we have also time dependent viscoelastic behavior. But it shouldn't be uh, very difficult for you to understand now when we say time dependent, it means that the behavior or, or, or how the material would behave and, and appear to our eyes is actually dependent on the time of deformation or deformation time. How fast the material deform and reform. Again, we use the elastic rubber band as an example here. We stretch the rubber band Okay, we can stretch it slowly, we can stretch it very fast. When we release, it will recover the original shape. How fast it will recover? Just like when we pour the sauce on the plate, how fast it will recover the original viscosity? It will depend on the time dependency of the, how fast it will recover the original structure so that it can go back to the original viscosity, right? So it's all about the rate of deformation, how fast it will deform, and uh, how fast it will reform the structure, rebuild the structure. So that is a time dependent, okay? To characterize viscoelastic properties, we must consider the time frame required to record a measurement, a measurement. What we measure depends on how rapidly we measure. That's uh, in the red text, red color. What we measure depends on how rapidly we measure. Just like when you move your, your hand in the water, you move slowly, basically you are measuring, you are feeling the water, right? you are measuring or you, feel, you are feeling the water. So you move your hand slowly, you feel the water, okay, you know, it's liquid. You move faster, become more and more, you feel the resistance and more and more. In the end, if you move very, very fast, just like the water jet is pumped at very, very high pressure, the rate of deformation is very high and it feels like a solid now. Do this simple experiment, move your hand through the water. So we have done this experiment, right? In our mind. Okay, in our mind. So the more, the faster you move, the faster you move your hand means actually you are applying a fast, a higher shear rate. Higher shear rate means higher deformation, uh, faster, de uh, higher and faster deformation. Okay. The more resistance you feel and the water feels like a solid, rather than a fluid or rather than a liquid. Remember, go back to our first lecture, everything flows if you wait long enough. If we wait long enough, the glass is flowing, but we cannot see. 
But if we would, we, if we, we wait long enough, we will see that actually it flows. Long enough means the time frame is long. The water jet just now flow at very, very fast shear rate. The time frame of deformation is very, very short. So that's the meaning of the time frame. So now we define the Debra number now, which is the ratio. Debra number is a ratio. So if it's a ratio, there is, is a dimension, uh, no dimension, yeah? Dimensionless. It's a ratio of characteristic relaxation time of a material to a characteristic time of the relevant deformation process. Well, does this definition make sense to you? The ratio of characteristic relaxation time of a material to, so we give a symbol tau to a characteristic time of the relevant deformation process. First, characteristic relaxation time of a material. Any material will have their own unique characteristic relaxation time. We stretch a rubber band, the rubber band will go back to its original shape because it has its own relaxation time to recover, meaning to recover its, uh, to, to recover its original structure. That's the relaxation time. Okay? You stretch a, a chewing gum. Stretch a chewing gum after you chew the, and you take all the sweet. <laughs> uh, it's just left, uh, just that part. So you, you try to stretch the chewing gum. Will it go back to its original structure? In this case, maybe no, because the chewing gum has its own unique characteristic relaxation time. The rubber band has its own unique relaxation relaxation time. It's about the recovery of the structure. Okay? Characteristic time of the relevant deformation process. How fast we deform the material? We pour slowly or we pump at 80,000 psi just like the water jet. That is the characteristic time of the relevant deformation process. How fast you deform. So we define Debra number as this ratio. So now, with this in mind, for, for an ideal Hookean salt spring, the tau, which is the characteristic relaxation, relaxation time, is infinite. For a Newtonian viscous liquid, the tau is zero. So now, Newtonian, the Debra number is zero, elastic Hookian solid is infinity, infinite. Then for viscoelastic, we have somewhere between zero and infinity. So we can define now high Debra number, much larger than one, the value much larger than one, it so any material with very high Debra number would appear or would show a solid-like behavior. And any material with very low DE number, uh, Debra number, low than, uh, more, uh, lower than one, would display liquid-like behavior. So anything between this will give you a measure or a degree of the viscoelastic property of the material. So the implication of this, the material can appear whether as a solid-like when it has a very long characteristic relaxation time or the relevant deformation process is very fast. A material can appear solid-like, like water, 
can appear like solid like it can cut the metal either it has a very long characteristic relaxation time but in this case no water does not have very long characteristic relaxation time it has a, it has a very very small relaxation time but in this case when water flow at 80000 ps high the relevant deformation process is very fast the relevant deformation process is very fast we go back to the this equation when water flow at 80000 psi in the water jet cutter the deformation time is very very fast meaning this value is very small maybe a fraction of second when this value is very small and it is constant for water so the de number now would be very big much higher than one so just now we say any when the bra number is much higher than much higher than one the water would behave like a solid When, when we pour the water slowly from the bottle, the rate of deformation or deformation time is long. So we have, and this is still constant, so we have now bigger T value, so the DE would be much smaller. So the DE the DE now much smaller than one, the water would behave more like a liquid. I hope it's not too confusing. Um, any question? Any part that is not clear about the visco the concept of viscoelasticity? It's okay. Uh, the first time, always, you feel like you understand, but sometimes maybe not so. And maybe the first time you, you want to ask questions, also you don't know what to ask. That's the reason why uh, I want you to watch the lecture, if it's available, before you come to the lecture. So when you watch the lecture before you come the le to the lecture, then and, and maybe you want to read more and explore more, then when you come to the lecture, whatever I say, whatever I explain in the class, make more sense. Then only you can start to ask good question. Yeah? But now maybe this is the first time you hear about viscoelastic. This is the first time that you know water can cut a metal. So it's just uh, too much. Maybe you cannot digest it. You cannot even ask a good question. Okay? So um, I, I'm trying actually, the reason why we record this lecture, so in the, in the future, I mean your junior you know we will have all the lectures already online for the whole semester yeah and they can watch even before they register the course even during the long holiday you know they can watch all the lectures if they are uh, Rajin enough <laughs> okay and when they come to the lecture but you know it should be I mean uh, easier for them to understand especially if they have done some reading you know on their own and make more sense so this is the, the new model that we want to use uh, currently for my lectures maybe a few lectures available online especially for this topic on rheology on emulsion maybe a few on crystallization and uh, you can actually start to uh, listen to the online lectures on emulsion it's already there yeah on the crystallization if you want so when you come to the lecture at least it's not something new because you have you have listened to the lecture before yeah okay um we, we stop here but uh before that uh i want you to register in my in the wiki space so the address is uh, very simple the address is here um
the address is imk209.wikispaces.com imk209.wikispaces.com Okay, thank you. So, see you next week. Eh?